guys today I thought I'd do a quick video on links so every company nowadays have web services multiple web services at that for external use for maybe multiple subsidiaries of the company maybe different projects are working on maybe internal use for employees and just having an easy way to make sure all these sites are up without having to install maybe additional software you don't want to necessarily have to install a software on your servers or your containers to check if the certain services are being offered, it'd be easier to check just if the page is responding, responding a certain status, if it's being redirected, um, if a certain maybe shortened URL is working, if a certain thing is accepting cookies or a certain mine type it's being accepted. So there's a way you could check these things using this great plugin I found. Um, it's a Nagios plugin that checks links. So you can check multiple sites really quickly, really easily, without having to install any additional software. And it's really easy to get started, so just keep watching. The first thing I'm gonna do is go to our Nagios Exchange site, and we're going to the Web Resource Monitor. So if you actually just do a quick search on exchange.nagios.org for check links, it'll come right up to this page. And if you look here, there's tons of information how to use this Nagios plugin all the features and functionality it has. I'm gonna demo a few of them when I set it up on our Nagio server, but just quickly you can look over, it checks uh, a URL to see if it's up. It checks for shortened links to properly link to a redirect. It checks if you're redirecting to HTTPS traffic. Um, so a, a bunch of different things. It actually does some more advanced things with cookies and um, mind types. So if you are a company that's working heavily with web uh, websites and hosting maybe websites for clients, or if you're a web developer and you wanna make sure your sites are up, this is a really quick, easy way to do it without having to install additional software on the web server to check if the server and services are up. Now let's log into our Nagios XI server. I'm gonna click on admin on the top right and now it's going to give us the option to manage plugins manage plugins will allow us to upload the plugin we just downloaded from nagios exchange we can click on browse and then we're going to go find the file the check underscore links dot pl perl script and then we're going to click on upload if everything's successful it should get a nice blue box on top there that now says check links uploaded successfully and if you scroll down you should see it listed and then you can see the file permissions. So it should be Apache and then the group Nagios having group permissions. So this should allow us to now go ahead and create a new command and start checking and using this plugin as many times as we want to configure. So it's not that we download the plugin once, we can only use it for one test. We download, upload the plugin and we can do a number of customized tests with that plugin, not just one. So now I usually like going into the Nagios command line. So this is the Nagios server command line. I'm going into the folder where the plugin has been uploaded to, and I like testing it on the command line. This will let me know if there's any sort of maybe library or Perl module that needs to be installed for this plugin to work correctly. So I usually will test it using, um, of course, the usage information here to make sure it's been tested, it runs correctly and as expected. So if you click on, if you type in check links underscore, check underscore links that PL, it will list the information how to use this plugin. And then it gives you a little example, but also on the Nagios Exchange site, there were a whole number of examples um, to go ahead and test out. So that way we kind of ruled out if it's an issue with the plugin or the server with the command you're running. By typing in one of the simple examples off the not use exchange site, we're able to do a really quick test. And this is just checking if return the status of 200 on a link, meaning if it's okay status, there's content that can be sent back. So if it's returning 200 means all okay status. And these are the HTTP um, status codes. So the most popular one's 404, meaning status is not found. So this one was returned 200, which means status is okay. And there's 300s, which are um, status for redirected or you don't have permissions to it. Now I'm gonna go into configure and I'm going to add a command. So if you go to configure, click on commands, and I'm going to create a new command 
and this is going to be used to check um, using different arguments in the plugin to check a certain service. So I'm going to call it check links and this one is going to accept a single argument. But since this plugin has so much functionality, you might want to do this multiple times using the different features. So if you want to check check links, if you want to check uh, redirects, or if you want to check with a cookie uh, content, then you might want to go ahead and create multiple commands for each of those scenarios with the different arguments. So this is a very simple check links where I'm just checking if the link returns a status of 200 and OK status. So I'm going to go ahead and type in, and it gives a little example down there. I'm going to name the command. I'm going to give it on the command line users1. That's just a path to where the file that we uploaded, the plugin file that we uploaded, is actually located. And then the minus u saying the URL for the argument we want to check the status of. And then argument1 which we'll provide later when we create the service, um, it's going to be the URL. So, but we have to find that part later. And then we create command type is check command. And then down under available plugin, we want to make sure the available plugin is listed as check underscore links.pl. So now that we have all this tested, we can go ahead and save this. And we're going to be able to now create um, check services using this command. And again, we create this once, we could check multiple sites using the same command, and we're going to give it a different service name, but they're all calling the same command with a different argument one. And that's really the difference here. So it's really useful to have one plugin configured a certain way and then be able to reuse it over and over again. Once we go ahead and save it, we'll be able to apply our configuration. If there's any issues or errors with the configuration, you can always go back and retrieve a previous Nagios configuration without the error. So you go back and view the snapshots and re reinstate or restore a snapshot. It's very easy to do if there's any issues at this step. If there are no issues and it added the command successfully, now we go in and create a service. We click on service, add service. We're going to give it a name. And you want to create maybe something a little bit more than just check links. So it might be check links and then maybe information of what link you're checking. If it's a certain company, then you might want to list check link and the company name. So if you're checking for multiple companies or multiple services, you're going to want to maybe give a little more detail. Then we go ahead and click our command, check links. Now you see it gives a little command view so you know which one of the commands you're selected. So we're able to provide it the argument one, and that will be the URL we want to check link. Make sure you put the full URL with HTTP colon slash slash the full URL. Otherwise, you might get an issue and it won't check correctly and you won't get back your status 200. Next, we're going to go ahead and click on check settings. And this is how often you want it check. How you might want to be every five minutes, maybe it's not important every 20 minutes. And then if it fails, how many, uh, how much time between retries and how many retries before it actually is classified as down and notify you. So we want to make sure this is checked 24 seven, unless it's non-critical, maybe you want to choose only business hours to check for, so it doesn't notify you maybe unnecessarily at night. So once we got everything filled out, click on check command common settings and we're going to add localhost so we're going to add the service to localhost so the localhost will be checking and now let's go ahead and save now we're going to apply our configuration and again hopefully this is successful but if it's not it's very easy to restore a previous configuration and start again now if we go look at our service listing we want to see if we're returning back an OK status, that everything was successful, and that um, it's listed as a green, as I mean, OK for the service we're checking for, the site we're checking for. So if you check immediately after setting it up, you'll probably get this pending um, status. So all you have to do is click on the service name, and it will allow you to do a force check. So the force check is nice because 
it allows you to check immediately. You don't have to wait so many minutes for the next check. So it came back as okay. That means my plugin worked successfully. It checked the URL. Now, again, I didn't like my name I assigned. I felt it wasn't descriptive enough. I should list what site I'm checking for. So I'll do check link Google, check link Google. And this is letting me know when it's listed there that um, this is the site I'm checking for. So again, if you have many sites you're checking for, you can do check link and then, of course, the company name. So you just make it a little more descriptive. We're going to apply our configuration again. Now we can see it's listed as check link Google. And again, we'll force our configuration. So it checks and it should all be good. Now, this is just one possible plugin check we could do. It's a very simple one. This is probably the one most commonly going to be used. But again, it has other functionality to this plugin. And let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the other possible uses of this plugin to check more than just check links. Now, if we went ahead and created a whole other command using that same plugin and named it redirect, then now we can go ahead and create the service. So we created the one um, check command and we used it for check links. But we, let's say we did the same thing again for redirect. Simple, easy. We just use the arguments, the minus U, the minus S, the minus header and location. Then we're able to create this new service checking for exactly that redirect. And we're able to use that command multiple times. So in this case, we're doing calling a check links redirect and maybe the URL you want us to be redirecting information from. So we could provide the information of the command, the service name, and then the arguments expecting. So it's expecting argument one and argument two, and that is the URL and the URL it should be redirected to with a status 301. Now we're going to check settings, and the check settings is just how often you want to check. Do you want to check every few minutes, if it fails, how many times it fail before you get notified, and then when should you be notified? Is it 24-7 or just business hours? Now I'm going to click on manage host. And this is associating the service with a host. I'm going to select local host. So that's who is doing the checking. I'm going to do add selected host. I'm going to save that. And now I want to go ahead and apply the configuration. Now, if there's no error messages, excellent. Then you go on and check that our service is now being monitored. So hopefully by clicking on not use XI in the top corner, it'll take us to the main page. And then we can go and click on host, local host, and check the services for local host. So I clicked on host and then I click on local host. And now it's listing again, it's listing as pending since it's just been maybe a minute or so since I actually created um, the service to be checked. I'm going to force it and it says header pass. Okay status. So now it's checking the site, it's checking the HTTP status, and it's returning back okay to my Nagus XI server. And if there's any issues, I should be notified because it is being monitored 24-7. And just a quick troubleshooting tip. I found that this plugin didn't need the util.pm, it's a Perl module. It actually comes with Nagus XI installation. So it's already on your system. You have to make sure it's on a path that the plugin will find. So I found the easiest thing to do is actually make this directory user lib non use plugin and just copy the utils.pm file to that directory. After that, the plugin will find the Perl module and have no issues running. So it's really, really easy to do. Just run these commands and it'll fix that problem right up. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, link below. Otherwise, be sure to check your web services and your links today. You don't want to be the last one to know. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.